Hey team, in this video, we're going to talk about and demonstrate seven principles that you need to master when it comes to escape and evasion, specifically as it relates to camouflage and concealment. We're going to do this uh, using some footage from the Grunt Proof Games. So if you haven't already checked that out, I'm going to leave a description down below as well as a card at the end so that you can go check out this amazing event. Now what we're really talking about is noise, light, and litter discipline. And I think to a certain extent we kind of get noise discipline. If something makes a sound, we recognize that as breaking noise discipline. But a lot of the times... Uh, where folks get hemmed up is is in thinking that light discipline only impacts us in our movement at night. And that is a critical mistake as we're going uh, to help demonstrate and talk about. Right in our eyes, they pick up movement, right? And when we do that, we're picking up things that are breaking light discipline. And our inability to enforce light discipline during the day is one of the leading factors that can result in you losing your ability to remain concealed. Right, and so there are seven principles that we're going to, to talk about and demonstrate. Let's get this thing going. And I group these seven principles into three categories. The first set of principles that we're going to look at is shape and silhouette. The human shape is easily identifiable, the head and shoulders especially. Anything we can do, whether it's planned or field expedient, to change the shape will drastically impact our ability to remain concealed. Now, you don't want to walk around looking like you're a walking bush, if you will, but we do want to help break up the outline of the body. When moving, you want to avoid skylining yourself, especially when on a hilltop, and use the vegetation and shadows available to help mask and blend in your movement so that you, your silhouette remains hidden. Now during this particular movement, there's a road around 200 feet behind us that is up about 40 feet higher in elevation. As I was stalking, I moved down and stayed below the crest to help conceal my movement. Right, team, I can't stress enough that you need to remain patient and in control of your thoughts and emotions and don't act irrationally because those moments is when you're going to do something and, and expose yourself to more risk than you're willing to do otherwise. Right, and the next set of principles is shade, shine, and shadow. When working through an E&E &E scenario, you need to do what you can, given the supplies that you have on hand or what you can find nearby, to reduce a tracking party's ability to identify you. We can use mud, coal, and makeup uh, are, are probably the prime candidates to do just that. Know that things don't have to be absolutely perfect, but continue to improve and reapply as needed. Again, man, you need to continuously assess your situation and analyze the best course of action with what will be impacted by your mission, your terrain, as well as what you know about that tracking party. When moving, attempt to move from covered position to covered position. Use shadows to your advantage to help keep you concealed. Don't be in a hurry to get yourself caught, but be slow and methodical about your movement. Now on this note, of course, there is a difference between concealment and cover. If you don't have a covered position, like a hill, you want to move from concealed position to concealed position. A tree, by the way, Scott, is great concealment, reading. but depending on the tree, man, it's not good cover. Before we move on uh, to the next and final set of principles, we're going to talk a little bit more about camouflage. Of course, there are a couple different types. They're, they're basically two different types. One is disruptive and one mimics. Okay, so disruptive and of course camouflage has been around for a long time, time immemorial, if you will. Anybody who's who does something to try to hide and break the, their body is using some sort of camouflage. Now, in the military, we've seen disruptive camouflage patterns going back to around World War II, right when you had big blotchy patterns on the uniforms. And this is really effective, and of course it's transitioned over time to, to smaller blotches. We've seen tiger stripes, and of course now uh, we see a lot of digital patterns out there as well, which is also really effective. The other type is mimicking uh, camouflage, and this has really got it, its head way back probably in the 80s, right, when, when things like Realtree became popular. And all we're really talking about is a photograph of a natural surrounding that is reprinted on articles of clothing. Now, I'm not going to tell you which one is better. We all have our personal preferences. What I would just submit to you is just be cognizant that it is all, to a certain degree, effective. 
And the further away you get from the, from the observing eye, the more effective even just a plain uh, natural colored shirt is because we become pixelated, if you will, uh, the further away we get. And the more uh, brush and the more terrain that we have between us and that individual. And if you don't think a plain colored shirt is effective, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to try to find me. That team is why I can't emphasize enough of wearing natural subdued colors. Again, whether or not you're working in a wooded environment or whether you're working in an urban environment, being able to blend in naturally to your surroundings and not drawing attention to yourself is critical in order for you to be able to maintain control of the situation. Dangerous route, but. ATVs right overhead. Now the final set of principles is sound and speed. And while sound definitely impacts your light discipline and ability to remain concealed because the human eye will catch movement many times way before we catch a silhouette by itself, I want to focus on noise discipline. Every type of movement is going to create some level of noise. So what we want to do is be mindful of our environment and select a route and speed that will minimize the noise that we make. Never assume that the tracking party is out of earshot from you, but don't be so risk averse that you are afraid of breaking a branch either. During this particular movement, the hunter had used a drone and was literally right on top of my position. And so I doubled back and changed direction and moved into a thick patch of Manateca, which is extremely hard to move through. And after moving in around 100 meters, I conducted a long security halt, knowing that if the hunter moved in onto my position, I was going to be able to hear him. Once satisfied that I was secure hours later, I moved on. We're going At slow. night, of course, your sound is going to travel further, so you need to be even more cognizant and use the natural light that you have to your advantage. One of the old principles that I learned a long time ago was to wait at least a half hour after the sun was completely gone and it was completely dark so that your eyes would become acclimated to the darkness and you could pick up uh, what, what was around you a little bit easier. Team, I hope you enjoyed the content of this one. If you did, make sure you like it. Make sure you leave some comments down below. That way we can continue to keep this conversation rolling. As always, man, I appreciate all you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. That's your boundary. Step over and games are on. Good to go. Good luck, brother. Oh, yeah. Gotta get away from the X. You remember, you know, natural lines of drift, just like a body of water, hunted, is gonna move the easiest way possible. Now he's got 10, 15 minute head start. Some human trash sign. All right, that's ground spore. We're gonna move off up this little ridge. I know he's moving to the northeast. This leads me to suspect we got dropped off in the southwest hand corner. So as we stopped here, we want to just look. So sometimes the best thing to do is just be patient.
short security halt down. We'll see if we can see. I see him there. Here. Pace counts wax. So I don't know how far I've traveled. Remember where you are. Remember that you have a job to do. Just to survive. I got enemy contact right in front of me. Gotta keep moving. That's the road. He knows my general vicinity. Good place now to kind of tuck back into some of his brush. Uh, he's somewhere out there. Man's in heat. I hate man's in heat. Right, so I'm in a pretty thick patch. So we're going to uh, go ahead and move to another tree, hunker down for a little bit, slow and methodical, maybe move, um, you know, a few hundred more yards. <laughs> 